This is a review of the new Periodic Audio Rhodium Portable DAC. Believe it or not, this tiny thing is a DAC and an amp and it retails for 50 bucks. It's capable of 32-bit, 384 kHz PCM. It's meant to replace the cheap USB dongle that came with your phone. As you probably know, those dongles sound absolutely terrible, so the bar is set pretty low. But can the Rhodium beat the popular $100 AudioQuest Dragonfly Black or the $200 Dragonfly Red? These DACs max out at 96 kilohertz, but it's MQA compatible, so you're technically able to get higher res output. Let's find out how these DACs compare. We're shaking, it's audio bacon. The Rhodium was obviously meant for mobile use, either on your phone or your laptop. It's USB-C, but it comes with a USB-A adapter. You would just plug it in like this. Because, duh. Now I've tested this both on my Pixel 3 phone and my MSI GS40 laptop. There are a few things to keep in mind. First, the Rhodium can output one volt RMS into a 32 ohm load. So this is not made for super high impedance or inefficient headphones. The Periog Audio Rhodium is recognized out of the box without any need for drivers. This includes the Gen 4 iPads running the latest iOS. The only exception is with the iPhone, which requires an additional lightning to USB adapter. For the AudioQuest DAX, you may have to upgrade the firmware on them. I have versions 1.07 for both black and red. The firmware you use could result in a different sound, and from my notes, 1.06 had a brighter sound. Secondly, on some Android devices, if you want bit perfect audio, including MQA, you need to download an app called USB Audio Player Pro. It's about eight bucks and another three to four dollars for the MQA add-on. Otherwise, the Android OS will try to upsample before sending it to the DAC. If you're using Kobas or Tidal on your laptop, you need to enable exclusive mode. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money on these DACs. Here, you'll see that I plugged in the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red and Tidal automatically detects it. And once you set it as output, it automatically sets the volume to the lowest because you can pretty much blow out your ears with this DAC. You can set the exclusive mode here. Unfortunately for the Rhodium, it doesn't have that pop-up, so you'll have to set this manually. And you'll see it here. This one. And you just have to make sure you click Use Exclusive Mode. You lose a ton of performance by sharing your output with other programs. There's a workaround to get it to work with Spotify, but they'll probably have an official feature when they release their lossless subscription program. I'll also be reviewing the DAX with the Periodic Audio Nickel Amp. I've written a review a while back, and this thing is amazing. It doesn't just give you more juice, but it improves the sound enormously. Even the AudioQuest Dragonfly DAX benefit greatly from this little device. Just be wary of your volume level. This will blow out your ears. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the headphones. So these are the headphones I use for the review. For earphones, I have the Periodic Audio Carbon and Beryllium. When I first saw these guys at the trade show many years ago, they were in lab coats and their booth looked a little bit whimsical and I thought it was just all marketing. Their earbuds didn't look like anything special, but when I tried their beryllium, they blew me away. They ended up being the only wired earbuds my wife and I listens to. But recently, if you wanted to know my top pick for IEMs, this is it. These are the Periodic Audio Carbons. Once they go in my ears, they won't come out for a while. Here's a mini review of the Carbons in comparison to the Beryllium's. The Carbons have more soul, bass, and are overall more warm and natural sounding. It articulates with confidence and control and with transient clarity. It has speed and detail, but very dynamic and impactful. It doesn't have the most sparkle, but it has enough of it. The Beryllium is more neutral, clean, and forward. It has a nice dreamy and silky sound, but to my ears, the Carbon is more fun and just more humanistic. I just hope my wife doesn't hear these because I'll never see them again. When you take a closer look, these don't look like $300 and $400 earbuds, but they beat out most of the buds on the market. In fact, I think the Carbon is my top pick among every earbud I've ever heard under a grand. Both of these earbuds are the same, the only difference is the material used for the diaphragm. So Beryllium and Carbon. With these carbons, no one will ever know you have diamonds in your ears. Super low profile, no microphone, even the packaging is minimal. Periodic Audio prefers to only spend money where it matters, the sound quality and the earbuds themselves. 
Here I have my travel on-ears, the closed back Odyssey sign. I think these are discontinued, but they're great headphones when you're on the go. You definitely need the nickel amp with these. They're also well built and can take a beating in the travel bag. I also have my custom JH Audio Angies. I bought these about six years ago. The cable is now a little bit green from oxidation and they don't fit my ears perfectly anymore. I need to get them reshelled. The print on one of the buds is actually my name in Chinese and my best friend actually gave me this stamp. Uh, a lot of people use it to apply their signature. They'll just dip it in ink and, and, and stamp a form. For enjoyment, I'll stick to the carbons, but if I'm in the mood for something more neutral and resolving, the Angies have a ton of texture, precision, and insight, but not a very warm sound. All right, let's get to the sound. As far as mobile phone use, I'm gonna cut to the chase. If you don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack and only a USB-C port like I do with my Pixel 3, then you have to buy one of these Dragon Tails, which will run you about 30 bucks. That kind of sucks, but it gets worse. The problem with this cable is that in all my listening, the Rodeon performed better because it didn't require it. The Dragon Tail cable basically coats the sound with this veil and softens up all the dynamics of the Dragonfly DAX. It's slightly fuller and warmer, but covers up all the benefits of having these DAX in the first place. With the Dragon Tail attached, the AudioQuest DAX, including the red, sounds muffled as if a thick piece of cloth was blocking the sound. It's a much duller and flatter sounding. It just sounds very sleepy. <sighs> also, compare this to having the Rhodium. You have this giant cable in between, whereas for the Rhodium, it's just a tiny cable, and this sounds better. So for mobile phone use, it's a swift victory for the periodic audio Rhodium. Not only for being compact and minimal, but the sound is far better than both of these dragonflies in every way because of the dragon tail. Cute name, but crappy product. $30 can almost buy you a Rhodium. All right, so for a fair fight, the only real test I can do is to connect the Dragonfly DAX directly to the USB-A ports of the laptop. The Rhodium will be connected to the USB-C port. I tried using the USB-A adapter on the Rhodium and the sound was pretty much the same on this laptop. As for comparisons against the Dragonfly Black, it was obvious which one I preferred. I have to give it to the Rhodium. The Black does have very good speed and a clear sound, but it was a little bit sharp and not very dynamic. Nothing really had weight or form. It had decent atmosphere, but it has too much sibilance and sizzle. To be frank, I don't hear anything special about the stack. As for the Rhodium, it's better in every way. It has better slam, dynamics, and separation. You could hear the gradual layering of complex recordings. The tones are earthier and sweeter while remaining full bodied. The black is more detailed, but it's far from sounding natural. For example, a popular audiophile recording, Diana Krall's Devil May Care off the Live in Paris album. With the Rhodium, the piano notes have more weight and grunt to them. You can almost feel the key press. There's depth and tangibility. On the black, everything is pancake flat. There's no gradations, lots of smearing, and it's not a very emotional sound. The Rhodium easily wins this one. Let's get to the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red. This DAC is much better than the black. It also looks better. If you're considering the black, I'll tell you now, it's worth saving up for the red. Although it has a 2.1 volt output, it still sounds way better with a periodic audio nickel amp. You get better separation, more micro details, and it's just very smooth. When I AB'd between the two, the red sounded pretty flat without it, and the nickel just gave the sound more meat and clarity. It just goes to show the importance of the amp stage of a DAC. So having the nickel in the chain for the review will show how both of these Dragonfly and Rhodium DACs scale. As far as performance, each DAC has its own strengths and will appeal to different people. The red has shinier and more present treble. It's a brighter, more vibrant sound. It has plenty of speed and air. I think its strengths are in the highs. As for the Rhodium, it has more of a dreamy sound. It's warmer with truer to life timbre and tone. Bass plucks are more tangible. It's not as transparent as the AudioQuest Red, but it sounds less digital and more lifelike. There's just a cohesiveness to the sound with the Rhodium, while the Red outlines and makes the sound more piecewise. 
For example, Billie Eilish's new single, Your Power. With the red, the strings tickle the space with vibrance and shine. There's a lot of reach and extension. It's a very expansive and dynamic sound. There's plenty of depth and decay. But when her voice comes in, it's a little cold. You don't know immediately that it's Billie Eilish. She has a very distinct voice and tone. On the other hand, her sultry and somewhat mellow and warm voice is recognized immediately with the rhodium. There's just this presence and weight in her voice that makes the listening experience a lot more soulful. Now this is with an MQA track, so only the red can leverage certain qualities. These qualities are transparency, depth, air, body, and resolution. The Rhodium with Tidal Master Files plays at 96 kHz. It doesn't have all these qualities, but holistically sounds more natural anyway. Pulling up another MQA track, I Could Have Danced All Night by Chet Baker, who is an astounding trumpeter. And the experience is a little bit different. The red is tighter around the edges and somewhat thinner sounding. Highs are clean and snappy. There's this pristine and brilliant quality to the sound. But on the rhodium, while not as vivid or resolving, presents a warmer and fuller sound. Woodwinds, bass, and brass in the recording have a denser and more tonally variant sound. There's more gravity and presence. Again, instruments just sound a lot more realistic with the rhodium. Finally, a non-MQA track, The Scientist by Tyler Ward, Tina Granis, and Lazy Sterling. The audio quest Dragonfly Red presents wonderful spatial clarity and detail. It just sounds like more music is happening from every direction. The rhodium is more grounded, more melodic, and romantic. You can hear the individual instruments and voices better and more clearly. The red sounds a little too bright and shiny at times, but separates and layers better. Treble quality is also more accurate on the red, but it's difficult to pick up piano and violins at times. I describe it as a fairy tale sound, very glittery and airy. This is a stark contrast to the rhodium. With the rhodium, when the male and female vocals overlay and harmonize, it sounds more dense and sweet. Bass is also more satisfying when the kicks come in. Again, tonality is much more natural with the rhodium, but the rhodium doesn't sound as spacious or deep. Which one you should get depends on what you're listening for. Also, if you listen to a lot of MQA albums, the only option you have is the AudioQuest DAX. Also, as I mentioned, if you're going to use a DAC on your phone, the Dragon Tail will deteriorate the sound quality so much that the Rhodium will always sound better. If you like a brighter sound that's more vibrant with sweet shiny treble, go for the Audio Quest Dragonfly Red. It reproduces cymbal crashes and woodwinds very well. It's more snappy, more energetic, and more open sounding. It's also an uncolored sound and you can hear lower level details. It's a more hyped, focused, and heightened sound. There's always a sense of liveliness, flair, and clarity. Reverb tails are crisp and easy to decipher. There's also more depth and layering, so the sound kind of stretches far from the front to the back. But if you listen to a lot of vocal recordings and prefer a warmer signature, go with the Rhodium. It just has better tonality at the expense of top end clarity. As for me, I listen to a lot of hip hop, R&B, rock, and pop. Although I like the expressiveness and treble of the red, I found myself reaching for the Rhodium more often. I just feel the Rhodium is more organic, effortless, emotional. Piano and drums just sound more realistic to my ears. It just has more color to the music. Bass also has wonderful rumble, gradient, and punch. It's tight and has plenty of slam. The red has a more glassy sheen on the bass. The rhodium doesn't have the micro details, but it has a more analog quality to it. It also seems to image better than the red. It has more grip and mold to ensure a distinction in tonal density. Although not the most technical sound, it's very lifelike in tone. The combination of the rhodium with the nickel and the carbons feels illegal. It sounds stupid good, especially for being this portable. This is just my preference, so if you enjoy the signature of the AudioQuest Dragonfly DAX, that's awesome. Everyone's different. I'm just willing to trade a more present and extended treble for a richer mid-range, and for me, that's the rhodium. At a fourth of the cost of the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red, and at a much smaller form factor, it makes this a no-brainer for me. Obviously, size doesn't matter here. Comment, like, subscribe, and hit that bell for the algo, and I'll fry up the next one.